Hey everybody, Guy from Ajax here. Welcome to the Daily 5 and 9, where I try to win 5 Splinterlands matches before I lose 5. And I record the matches in real time, so you can hear my stream of consciousness thinking while I set and calculate my strategies. Uh, Web3 strategy games like Splinterlands are the best, and gamers need more of them to choose from. That's why I'm developing a Web3 basketball strategy game called Geeked Out Basketball. The links are in the description below. Now let's get rolling on today's matches. Had a nice five and, it was either five or two or five or three day yesterday. Don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, goals to finish October with a winning record. I think I'm one or two games above 500 at the moment. All right, so water is the only splinter. Uh, armor is going to be absorbing magic and we got reverse speed. Huh. Which is great because I need to go with Ke Kelia and the plus one speed. So that's going to be a little bit of a wet blanket on my lineup across the board. Let's try something here with um, speed in reverse order and just kind of see. All right, I recently leveled up the feasting seaweed. Uh, what big mana monsters? I can put the wave brood in the anchor position to absorb some damage. And then at this point, yeah, I think I just go with the Deep Lurker. And then what other large mana monsters? We'll try the Coastal Nymph. Set her right there. And then I think I just I need to get the Seaweed out of the lineup and just bite the bullet and go with some large mana monsters. Ooh, actually... Let me think this through. I could probably do the Cethropod in the tank position. Yeah, what do I want to do here? Or <clears throat> put the Guardian in here for some healing. We'll put the Hellendale here, and that leaves me with a 9. So I'm just going to do this and not really worry about the speed. So I can go with a 9 tank which means the Legionnaire with its two speed. Actually do not mind this lineup right now. Yeah, let's roll with this and see what happens. Curious to see what my opponent puts out there. <clears throat> yeah, Demon Shark <clears throat> and the Flying Squid. A little bit more of a conventional lineup from my opponent. I went a bit unconventional with the Legionnaire. Um, because when you're playing water, <clears throat> it's hard to not just lead with the Demon Shark as your tank. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, my Wave Brood is poisoned. Uh, didn't really matter. Yeah, Wave Brood did its job, absorbed a lot of damage. And then we keep missing attacks on the Demon Shark. That's not great. It got resurrected. Yeah, I think my opponent may be outplaying me on this one. Finally got that Demon Shark out of there, but I think it's too little too late. I don't think the Deep Lurker can hold up even with the healing... <clears throat> yeah, this one's over. All right. In an effort to speed up the video, we'll skip to the end. Down 0 1 on the day. All right. Uh, unlimited mana, opportunity, and odds. Let's go, let's go with death. I like some of the big mana monsters in death and a lot of them have odd numbers. So we'll roll with the Night Ghoul, Jin Morant, the Queen of Crows. Uh, this increases Magic Reflect, Return Fire and Thorns. Same thing as Queen of Crows. Let's roll with it. And then do I want to go with my two archery monsters here? 
door. Yeah, I mean, I kind of want to maybe consider the silent shop E as well. I actually think I might like it more than the Kabbalists. Uh, 225. Silent shop E is 356. Yep, we're going to roll with the silent shop E. And hope that I... Uh, kind of worried because I think I have a pretty low amount of armor among my monsters. Doesn't matter though, my opponent's going magic. Oh, check that. My front two monsters actually have quite a bit of armor. And the Jin Marat's going to absorb magic with the armor as well too, which is great. <clears throat> and I have the right summoner in there to um, offset the magic a little bit. I wish I had a blast monster with where they placed their slip spawn. Could have gotten a triple hit. Okay, crippled the Goblin Tower. Okay. Oh, can't be missing. The Regal is really good at avoiding hits between its high speed and the flying ability. Okay, got the Disintegrator out of there. Which is fine, I didn't have any melee monsters left anyway. This one's going to be close. The Pelicor Mercenary with its healing can be a bit annoying. Oh, got it, great. Yeah, the death blow by by that um, archer monster and death is great. All right, so it is 1-1. One, one. Okay, 16 mana. Everything has sneak. Don't want to go back to death and plant the Curse Windaku in the anchor position. <clears throat> no, I'm going to go with a melee heavy attack here. We'll put the Fiend in there. Uh, da, da, da. I actually recently update, up, upgraded my um, Cobalt Bruiser, so we'll put him in here, as well as the Reyes. I'm going to go with the Exploding Rats, and then we're going to go with a 1-1. One, one. We're going to go Chaos Agent and the Scorcher. A lot of these monsters... <clears throat> Not here, I want to put the Chaos Agent in the tank position. Then how do I want to order these? I'm going to put the Uraeus here in the anchor position to absorb hits. And then the Bruiser next. And then we're going to put the Scorcher up here in the reach position. And kind of keep the exploding rats in the middle protected with their blast ability. And their high speed. Hopefully I can get two or three rounds out of the, um, the exploding rats. I think I need to check out Splinter Tools and um, kind of see the functionality. I don't really use, the only other non-Splinter Land site I really use where I connect my Hive Wallet is the is Peak Monsters to gauge the value of my cards and how I'm doing with rentals in the market. Uh, I think I need to research Splinter Tools a little bit and kind of see what that has to offer. I've been seeing a couple influencers here on YouTube using it. It looks interesting. Okay, my opponent seems to be taking a bit of time setting our lineup. There it is. They're also going melee as well, too. I'm glad I went melee. If I would have gotten too cute with death, I think they might have overpowered me. Mm. Interesting, they're putting the Antoid Platoon here. That's actually very smart. It's going to... It's gonna blunt a lot of my um, a lot of my melee hits. Okay, I got their fiend out of there. Ooh, they have a scavenge monster in there as well. Ooh, look at that! But my speed, my speed worked out very nicely. Happy, happy with this one. Unless there's a complete destruction, yeah, two one up, two one on the day. Okay. All right, let's keep this going. Things are moving slow today. Ten minutes in already, only three battles. Okay, all melee monsters. 
Uh, let's just go right back to fire. Let's go with the Antoid Platoon. Let's put my two three mana monsters in there, the Serpent King Spy and the Uraeus. And, you know, do I want to go Living Lava? No, that doesn't leave me. What, what if I force my Striker in here? <clears throat> and the Radiated Brute. And then I put the Scorcher and the Fiend both up front. Or, you know, I put the Fiend here to protect the Spy a little bit. Move the Striker up. Yeah. Hopefully, with this, hopefully between the, the Uraeus, the Striker, the Spy, and the Radiated Brute, I have enough offense in here to, um, to cause some damage. There's that dang Harclaw. Pretty annoying monster. The only thing is the Harclaw has no offensive ability there, but it is a great, you know, defensive monster to put in that anchor position in this rule set, knowing I would be coming with a lot of uh, sneak monsters, most likely. Yeah, I think that was pretty smart. And then you have the self-healing of the Curse Windicu. I think my opponent got... Yep, my opponent has me here. Uh, we'll skip ahead. 2-2. Two, two. Okay, equalizer and close range attack. The obvious thing here would be to go with General Sloan, which honestly, I'm gonna do the obvious thing because with equalizer, there are a few low mana monsters I would like to, to leverage as well. So definitely gonna go Prismologist. We're definitely gonna go Uriel up front to do his thing. And let me just put in a couple of my favorite low mana monsters being Venari, Crystal Smith, and the Stish Leech, and that leaves me with 14 mana. I think this lineup kind of writes itself. I want to put the Pelicor Arbalest in here, and then that leaves me with eight. Do I go with the Time Meddler? <clears throat> oh, I think I go Gargoyle Devil, and then instead of the Crystal Smith, we're going to go with the Portal Spinner. Yeah, I like this lineup. Okay. Actually, no, I don't need Gargoyle Devil because I've already got close range attack. I'm going to go with the, the Shield Heal of the Brightwing. And then how do I want to order these? And I'm going to put the Prismologist second. Let the Portal Spinner man the um, anchor position. And we'll put the, yeah, this right here. I'll leave it. So I have two strong armor monsters ahead of the bright wing to get the repair as needed. Okay, my opponent's coming at me with magic. It's going to make Uriel a bit less effective. Or not, not a bit, a lot. Hopefully there's enough self-heal to get at least one attack out of my Uriel. Nope. Oh, I do have the Resurrect, though, but I still don't think it's going to work. Yeah. The magic was um, too effective against me. Their Slip Spawn did its job. Absorbed a lot of my attack. Long shot for me on this one. <clears throat> the only thing that's going to give me any hope at this point is if the Stitch Leech can accumulate enough health to actually be a formidable monster and let the portal spinner and the arbalest do some damage here in the back row. With with all the healing that my opponent has, I don't think that's going to happen. Yep, tough one. Yeah, I finally got that Mycelic Infantry out of their tank position, but much too little too late. All right. So how are we sitting today? All right. Two, three. I'm down. This is going to be a long, long video. I might go over 20 minutes. All right. Uh, 32 mana cap, no healing. Let's go. I haven't gone dragon yet today. But with no healing, I don't think now's the time. I think I'm just going to go with blunt force melee. 
between my brute, my striker, my serpentine spy, and Uraeus. And let's see what I'm left over with. Got 12, which means I could probably go Jin Inferni and the Antoid Platoon with the Scavenge. We'll let the Uraeus man the Oh shoot, I left a I left a mana on the table. Oh, too little too late now. Every now and then I make a dumb mistake like that. Let's see if it costs me. Okay, they put smartly put their chaos agent in the in the anchor position. Yeah, my um my sneak monsters have a lot of work to do here on their back end, especially with the armor from Kelia. And they got my Antoid platoon out of there pretty quickly. And I'm missing attacks. This is this is not shaping up to be a strong match. Yeah. Too little too late. Down two four. Can I win three in a row? Okay, so aim true and all evens, and then need to go water. So there's definitely going to be a roll for the Fiend in this lineup. Definitely going to be a roll for the Derpler, Deep Lurker. What do I want my tank to be? Maybe the Bakchara? And then the Kulu? Swim Hunter, maybe? As a four? <clears throat> or do I want to go with two twos and let Igor and Zenith Archer... Yeah, I've leveled them both up. I'm going to try to go with a bit of ranged attack in the back here and put the Torrent Fiend back here to absorb some, some attacks. And let's see what happens. So I really need my middle three to be offensive demons in this approach. Okay, yeah, they're going Kulu, Igor, and Deep Lurker. Similar approach. I guess I should have thought this through. Not really any strong sneak monsters with even numbers in water. Yeah. I guess regardless, the Fiend is absorbing the Deep Lurker hits, though. And there, Zenith Monk is actually going to outlast my Bakjara in the tank position. Yeah, it's a smart play on their part. Now it's a matter of whose deep lurker can last longer. Ah. Can I get an eagle? Yep. I, yep, too little too late. Down, lost 2-5 today. All right. Um, okay, I hope everyone has a great Saturday. We'll talk tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe.